episode 12 of The Beard Caster. My name is Scott Sakura, and I am The Beard Caster. <laughs> Once again, welcome to The Beardcaster. The Beardcaster is a podcast all about beards and mustaches and the great people who live in the community. These are the stories from the people who live in it, the adventures they have, the reasons they do what they do, and the facial hair that accompanies them. So why don't you please join me on this entertaining exploration of these people and hear why they are winning right now. Welcome once again, my name is Scott Sakura. I've already told you that, so you should know it, and I'm 13 episodes in, so by gosh, you should know it by now. If you don't know, you can go to my website, www.thebeardcaster.com, and you can find out more information about myself and what I do and listen to all the other previous episodes I've done so far. You can also find direct links to all my social media sites, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my YouTube. All right there, one easy click away. You can also find a link to a really cool page too. It is my Patreon page. And for those of you who aren't aware what Patreon is, Patreon is, I, I'm not exactly sure if it was specifically designed for podcasters in mind, but there are different types of artists and stuff that use this. But it is a page where people who listen to a specific podcast can go and make a small donation it can be 25 cents it can be two dollars it can be five dollars it could be whatever you want so if you're getting value out of my podcast and you like it or you like me or you just feel very generous or whatever you can once again go to my website beardcaster thebeardcaster.com and there'll be a red thing on the bottom that says donate so you can go right there, click on it. But enough about that. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if something's bothering you, if you have a comment about something, if you just have something to get off your chest, if you want to just write a fun little letter to me, you can do that. All you got to do is you go to thebeardcaster at gmail.com and you can email me that easily. It is that easy. You can do it. This is going to be a little different episode than I've normally done in the past. Usually I've had guests on before, but I kind of ran into this little fun thing and I thought, hey, this would be kind of something fun to do. And so I got my field recorder out and I took the child with me and we went into the woods. And for those of you who aren't aware, there's this specific insect that's been living in the ground for about 17 years now and it decided to come out. Where I live, there was an area where they started coming out of the ground, climbing up into the trees, and doing what they do. And this insect is called the 17-year cicada. For those of you who aren't aware of any of the information about this, you are in luck because that's what this episode is all about today. I'd like to play the little bit that Lucas and I recorded in while we were walking through the park. So... I know it might be a little bit of dead areas in there, but I thought it was kind of funny and entertaining because I really thought I knew more about these things than I did. So I kind of spout off some information that I thought I knew. And once we were done with our little adventure, I went back onto the internet to see if I could get more information about the 17-year cicada. And I went to a website called uh, cicadamania.com. And on that website, I found this really cool, informative video. The video was called 17 Interesting Facts About the 17-Year Cicada. So we watched it, and I was like, it, it was very quite informative, and it was very entertaining and funny. So I reached out to cicadamania.com and said, Hey, guys, would you mind if I borrow what you guys posted up here and play it on my podcast to kind of inform people about the 17 year cicada and they're like yeah sure go ahead go ahead do it so what you're going to hear now is a little bit of lucas and i out in the woods trying to find the cicadas and me trying to interview the cicadas uh you'll hear that but they don't talk so that was kind of a bad idea on my part but you can't hear them 
in the background and it's really cool sounding and then immediately following that there will be the audio from this really cool video once again you can find at cicadamania.com the 17 uh, or 17 facts about the 17 year cicada is the video you can find it going through the site there's lots of cool things to go check out on that site and after once again after that there'll be the audio of that video on there so it'll give you a little bit of information about the 17 year cicada so without further ado let's just dive right into this action your mama yo mamas okay this is the adventure of lucas and scott in the forest say hi hi what are we doing right now we're walking through the forest it sounds like you're skipping sure whatever so what's what's going on today i don't know you don't know that's you dad <laughs> Taking in nature, taking in the 17 year cicada that's uh, decided to come out and play. Oh, wait, there's one. No, that's called uh, someone carving into a tree. Yes. Oh, no, there is one right I there. I told you. Look at that. Look, as I walk into a spider web. Yuck. Okay, Mr. Cicada, what do you have to say? Here, I'll put you right on top of the microphone. Okay, Mr. Cicada, what do you have to say? You're still not talking. <laughs> Lucas doesn't like you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. Jeez. He, he flew. He flew over there. Oh. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> did it record me scream? <laughs> yes, it did. It adds good effect. <laughs> All right. So now we're we're trekking through the park right now and mm -hmm. looking for these cicada, which we, we know where they all are, but we decided to go for a walk in the woods to kind of uh, see if we could find more in here. But they're apparently... Oh, yeah, where? Right there. Oh, the underside. Yeah, so they're mostly located close to the water right now, which we came up and walked around the water and the trees and stuff and so we decided we would come into the woods to see if there were more in here but apparently not so we're making our way back towards the pond so we can capture more sound but I don't know if you can kind of hear them in the background if you listen very carefully here listen Okay, maybe not. Once we get closer, though, we will see if we can get better, better sound. The 17-year cicada is a cicada that comes every 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that it comes back every 17 years. It lives underground, and for 17 years it is kind of a little larva, and it moves around and it's eating and feeding. It, it f feeds on nuts. So they, they're, they're living underground and they're alive. And then every 17 years they come out of the ground and they c come out of their shells and they climb up out of the trees and they fly around and they mate and then they fall to the ground and I guess when their bodies come down they lay eggs and they work their way back into the ground again and then the whole cycle starts again. How does that make you feel? Not so happy. How would you like it if you had to live underground for 17 years? Not so happy again. Yeah. Oof. Sorry. Keep on flying. What? Just the gnats keep on flying. Gnats. 
How do you spell Nat? N A T. No, G N A T. What? No, you're wrong. Oh. I'm so right. It's it's, it's gnarly. How do you spell it, gnarly? J E P I L U E. Wow. And this kid just graduated into fifth grade. Spelling champion. Spelling champ. A M P. Okay, so cicada hunting has turned into a spelling bee. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can hear, but they're getting louder. It almost sounds like it could be like a UFO. They're like little alien creatures. They, they almost look like that. They're like their faces and their bright red eyes. The bright red eyes are blood. Oh, th- their eyes are full of blood? Yes. <laughs> From all the children they suck the blood out of? Yes. Oh, this is just amazing. I remember this when I was, let's see, 17 years ago. I was... What what's what's forty one minus seventeen? Mathematician. No, so that's three, wait. Um, wait, what was the numbers again? Forty one minus seventeen. Thirty four. Okay, so thirty four? Yeah. That's not seventeen. That's that's not even ten. Wait. We spot one. There's one walking across the road right now. Do you have anything to say, Mr. Cicada? He doesn't have anything to say. Okay, now I'm sure you can tell because I can hear it in my headphones now that they're getting a lot louder. This is, I mean, so, okay. So what do we decide with 41 minus 17? I have no clue. Yeah, you do. 34. 34, so... No, wait, it's 21! 21! <laughs> wow. All right. It's 30-something. Okay, let's just say I was... It's 34! Okay, 34 plus 10 is what? Um, about, uh, 45. 34 plus 10 is 44. I'm, I'm dumb. So what's 34 minus 7, then? I don't know. <laughs> Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. All right. Regardless, I was younger. We'll just go with that. It's it's Memorial Day, and I don't feel like doing math right now. We're just trying to suck in this really cool. You want to walk over here? Okay. Can can they sound like they're louder over here? But then again, they just sound loud everywhere because they're everywhere. Here's one crossing the road again. Excuse me, sir, do you have anything to say? That was the sound of him walking on the road and then him flying away. Well, it could be a she for all I know. I don't want to... No, I don't know if this is making... Oh, here, here's another one. Let's let's ask this one. Well, that one's dead and squashed. Okay, excuse me, ma'am or sir. Do you have anything exciting to say? Oh. Nope, that one doesn't have anything exciting to say. Okay, let's go this way. I heard a car coming. I said to get off the road. Okay, we're walking up by the pond here. Doesn't seem to be too much right here. Getting close to the water. Wait, wait, wait. Right wait, there. where? What? In the grass? Right here. Oh, yeah, here's one. Okay, excuse me, ma'am or sir, do you have uh, something to say? Okay. I have you, you're on the microphone now you are choosing not to say anything. <laughs> what? Okay. Don't do what again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Fly. He doesn't want to. Do there we go. He flew away. He's flying through the air now. Okay, I was trying to give a little history lesson about the cicada here. The 17 year cicada that's decided to come out of the ground this Memorial Day. Wish I, would, I knew more about it, and I wish I would have paid attention to all the fun news stories that were. Yeah, you should have, Scott. Yeah, I should have, right? Yeah. That have been on the TV over the past couple weeks, like getting ready for this big, exciting thing. It's a really loud, annoying bird right there. I think it's bald eagle. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Red winged blackbird. He's just really loud. I don't, you know, I don't know if the birds eat, eat these cicada. I'm sure they could. I mean, there's a billion of them. Everywhere you look, they're just all over everything. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, child, what's your take on it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, how about now? What does that mean? I think they are cool. The cicadas are cool. I'll give you a buck if you eat one. What? No! Why not? I don't want to eat it. Cool. Okay, I'll give you two dollars if you eat one. No. They're good for you. They have a lot of protein, apparently. hundred dollars. A hundred dollars to eat one. Yep. And I can film it? Yep. Hmm, that might be a hundred dollars well spent. I'm gonna, we have to videotape it and we'll put it online? Yeah. It has to be dead first. No! Yes! Why can't it be alive? Because. Because why? Because it's going to crawl in your stomach. And... No, because if you... Oh, so you're going to swallow it alive and it's going to climb back up your throat? Yeah. Oh, see, now, okay, here we are. If you look into the ground, we're looking down in the ground right now, and there's... It looks like Swiss cheese with all the holes in the ground from... Yes? Or am I pointing at something? Oh, yeah, they're all over the, the bushes here. But if you look at the ground, there's all these little holes in the ground where they all have been living for 17 years and they just burrow out and then they walk on over to the closest bush or shrub or tree and they start climbing inside of their shells and then they molt out of their shells and then they walk up more and then they fly and then they cicada cicadas sing the cicada song not the John cicada song John cicada I can't see him no? Because they're so small. Because they're so small. Ooh, there's some nice ones right here. Okay, excuse me, sirs, do you have anything you can say? I found one that's missing a wing. All you're, all you're doing is flapping. I, I know you guys are talking, so make some sounds. I can... Okay, let's walk over here. One flew on my ear. No, what did it say? It just went... Yeah, and? That was it. Oh. It didn't say anything. It flew right in my ear. Flew in your right ear? Yes, so it flew right into your right ear. Yep. Nature. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why are you whispering? Because I feel like it! Jeez. Is that any better for you? No, you're going to scare him. Oh, it's that stuff. <laughs> it's okay, we're... It's getting windy now. Even better because they're gonna fly off now. No, they're not. Why? Because what you read that? You read that? Because I read that in the article. There's one that fly off the tree. Okay.
Okay, let's walk back then. I'm a scientist. You are. So tell me something about science. Um. That's a dragonfly. Dragonflies have wings. I know. We're you know we're trying to make this as visual as possible because it's an audio recording. Grass is living. Yeah, and? Oh, uh, I don't know. Wow. This is really captivating audio here. Yummy! Look at all these cicada shells. There's tens of twenties of them on that bush. I don't know what that means, but... Puppy monkey baby! <laughs> to get one of these uh, cicada to talk to us here. I'm trying to find one that's willing to speak open and candidly about its life. I'm just having a hard time. All they want to do is just sit on the... You'll give a cicada a thousand dollars if it talks. What language? I don't know what language that is. It's Britain. Brit it's Britain. So would not a Britain person speak British? They would speak British like the candidates of Ohio. British like the candidates of Ohio. Uh, John Kasich, is he British? He's a lawyer. John Kasich, the lawyer. I don't know. I well, you would know better than me, I guess. Ooh, that's a mushroom. A mushroom. Okay, we're walking up to this one tree here. And there's a lot of shells on the ground. There's one that just flew right there. Right. Oh, I see it. That one's a big one. That one's right there. Okay, here. Mr. Cicada, do you have anything to say? Once again, another one that climbed onto the microphone. And if I keep talking into the top of this thing, I'm, I'm kind of afraid that it's going to fly right into my mouth. Ha <laughs> ha. That'd be awesome. <laughs> then you'd be owing me a hundred bucks, buddy. No. I won't. Oh, there's a nice bass right there. Delicious. Delicious there. bass in the water. I don't see a bass. It's right there. I don't see nothing. Okay, Mr. Oh, I see it. Never mind. Okay. Mr. Cicada looks like he's... This This specific one looks like his... Look at his wings. Looks like his wing died. Yeah. Looks like he has dead wings. I don't know if he can fly. Let's see if he flies. Nope. He just falls right to the ground. Sorry, Mr. Cicada. Or Mrs. Cicada. We'll just call him all John. John Cena. No, John Cicada. John Cena. John Cicada. John Cena. Okay, you can go that way. Um, oh, you're not going this way? No. Why not? Look at all of them. They're in the grass. Climbing up the grass. There's, two, there's like so many over there that it's really light. It's too much for you to handle? Okay, we're walking through the grass. You can just hear, I hear them everywhere. There's two butterflies, they're fighting. I think I'm under a tree that has a lot of them in it because it just sounds like there's right over my head. But then I look up and as high as I can see this tree, this tree right here is probably about a good... 75 feet up in the air and as far as I can see up into the tree they're way up there on the leaves and on the branches just shells everywhere it's just intense man intense mm, 
the child's too afraid to come where I'm at right now because apparently there's too many of them. So he's back by the road dancing and neighing and whatever kids are doing these days. Okay, walking a little bit more. It's a really crystal clear water day too. Wow. Child. Over here, come on. You should see all the fish, it's amazing. He doesn't want to see no fish. Oh, here. If you can talk to this guy. This is Mr. Dragonfly. Okay, here you go. Come on. Get on there. There you go. Oh, he flew away. But he was he was on there for a brief moment. Mr. Dragonfly. Let's see. Child is what? Okay. Well, I guess we're just gonna end this now because this is, you know, once again really exciting and uh, yeah. Well, I just thought I'd uh, record a little bit of this just to kind of get the ambiance of what's going on here and the cool sounds and of something that only happens every 17 years. So, uh, if you've made it through this far. I appreciate you listening this long. All right, thank you. Hi, this is Dan from cicadamania.com, and these are 17 facts about 17-year cicadas. One, periodical cicada names. They're called periodical cicadas because they emerge periodically and not annually. They're called 17-year cicadas because they arrive every 17 years. The genus of the various species is called magic cicada, and I believe William T. Davis came up with that in 1925. If you think about it, they are kind of magical. Historically, they've been called flies, grasshoppers, and locusts. People in the New World probably called them locusts because they reminded them either of the locusts of the Bible or locusts of the Old World, of the Middle East that would arrive in terrifying numbers and consume all the vegetables and food to be found. Of course, cicadas don't do the second part. They do arrive in large numbers. According to Gene Kritsky's book, Periodical Cicadas, The Plague and the Puzzle, the first time there were cold locusts that we know about was in 1666 by someone named Oldenburg. Of course, a true locust is really just a grasshopper gone a little crazy. Grasshopper on steroids, as someone might say. Look at those giant hind legs. Look at that, those mouth parts made to masticate vegetable matter. This is definitely not a cicada. But, because it's large and they arrive in, a, in huge numbers, the average person might get confused. Number two. Guess what? There's 13-year cicadas, too. The four species of 13-year cicadas are one, magic cicada tray decim. Two, magic cicada neo tray decim. Three, magic cicada tray decassini. And four, magic cicada tray decula. The broods that feature them are brood 19, 22, and 23. Number three, eye color. Most of the magic cicada you see, they have red eyes, reddish orange eyes, but they can also have white eyes, blue eyes yellow eyes, and even multicolored eyes. Just about every eye color but green. Four, the Mazospora cicadina fungus attacks magic cicadas. So this is a fungus that destroys the cicada's abdomen, or sex organs, really. In the males, they actually start behaving like females, and they'll flick their wings like females will and attract other males. 
this fungus is the one predator, so to speak, that's able to get around the long 17-year cicada life cycle. And it does spread during mating. Number five, power tools or lawnmowers. This is a fun one, kind of. So cicadas are attracted to vibrating machinery, and that could be a saw, a power drill, a lawnmower, anything that sort of vibrates mechanically. The cicadas think it's a cicada or a chorus of cicadas, so all the other cicadas are attracted to it. So if you have a power tool or you're mowing the lawn, the cicadas will land on you. Our advice, our pro tip, if you will, mow the lawn or do your power tool stuff in the morning or late in the day when the cicadas are less active and will be less likely to harass you. Number six, cicadas have five eyes. So they have those two big, large compound eyes. And then they have these three simple eyes. They're called ocelli, O-C-E-L-L-I. And we believe they're used to detect light and darkness. And since there's three, I bet that they could probably use them to triangulate the direction of the sun or shadows created by leaves or predators. But again, there's five eyes. Number seven, people eat them. It's barbecue cicadas, popcorn cicadas, cicada po'boys, cicada pralines, cicada burgers, cicada pasta, cicada ice cream, cicada pizza, cicada cookies. Any way you can think about it, people will cook a cicada. And this has been true going back to the Native Americans and the settlers that came to America. Uh, once the cicadas emerged, they ate them. Hey, it's a new food source, I guess. Um, I say avoid it. And the one reason is because cicadas are known accumulators of mercury. Uh, we actually gather them and, and folks test them for mercury. So they've been underground for a long time absorbing chemicals, particularly mercury, so you might not want to eat them. Although I've never tried eating a cicada myself, I do hear that the texture is sort of like wet cardboard and they taste kind of like piney shrimp. So in other words, they taste probably like those trees that hang from rear view mirrors of cars. Number eight, animals eat them. Pretty much if it has a mouth, it's going to eat the cicada. Uh, and that, that's your dog, maybe your cat, uh, and then any kind of wild animal. Raccoons, squirrels, birds, turkeys. Well, turkey's a bird. Um, they're going to eat them if they find a uh, cicada. I... But that's part of the cicada's strategy. They come in, out in such huge numbers that they satiate the hunger of predators, which include your family dog. And they're so full, just like being stuffed at their Thanksgiving dinner, that the next wave, if you will, the next day maybe, of cicadas will um, get right past the predators because the predators are too full of cicadas to even bother with them. Sick to their stomach of cicadas. One note for pet owners, um, dogs and cats can choke on the cicadas if a wing gets lodged in sideways or if they just gorge themselves. So, so keep an eye on your pets, your dogs and your cats. Um, make sure that they're not choking on any of the cicadas. They might get over There's so many. It's like a feast that, you know, just like someone feasting themselves at the, the local buffet, they might choke on them. So keep an eye on your pets. And, of course, also if your neighbors hosed them down with pesticides, that's not going to be healthy for your dog either. It's not good. And, of course, mercury. Number nine, they eat tree fluids. So cicadas don't eat leaves or vegetables. They actually drink what they eat. And what they drink is a particular tree fluid called xylem. They probably also absorb phloem, too. Um, but xylem is the main component of their diet, so to speak. 
And uh, they also have a lot of bacterial symbionts, at least two main bacteria, and one of them breaks up into like 20 different variants of it. It's complicated, but those bacteria help them digest the nutrients that are in the uh, xylem, and then they that's their food, essentially. Um, if they were down underground eating cake for 17 years, they'd probably be as big as a refrigerator, but xylem isn't that nutritious, uh, so they, they're pretty, they stay pretty small. Plus, they're busy underground. I'll get to that in a second. They're working off those calories. Number 10, periodical cicadas pee. So if you're outside, you may notice uh, like it's like a rain or a sprinkling. You say, how could it be rainy on me? It's sunny outside. Well, uh, that's a cicada peeing on you. Sorry. Um, well, cicadas drink fluids as you know, well as eat fluids, as I've talked about. But they drink to refresh themselves. And during that process, they're going to absorb uh, phloem, and, which has a lot of sugar. And then when they excrete that, uh, it's the liquid that comes out is a little sweet, and people actually call it honeydew. Who's tasting cicada pee? I don't know. It's not me, but it's called honeydew, and it's called that because it's sweet. And yes, cicadas pee. Um, the cicada hat is there just in case, you know, if you wore the cicada hat, it would protect your hair from cicada pee. Gross, but practical. Number 11, cicada sound. The sound that periodical cicadas are known for is produced by the males only. And the males have these organs called timbals, which they vibrate with muscles, and the vibration is actually uh, amplified because the insides are hollow. Uh, the reason why they make these sounds is really to attract females attract females, they'll mate, and make more cicadas for future generations. They have various calls. They have alarm calls if they're being disturbed. Someone is rustling their jimmy, so to speak. If uh, they have different court calls, calls just to attract the female, and then they have choruses when a bunch of them get together to attract females. Uh, they have something called a percula, which covers up their eardrums, and what their eardrum is called is a tympanum technically not an eardrum we have, but that's the organ. And one thing interesting they, thing they do is when they call, they use the opercula to cover up the tympana so they themselves uh, don't hear the, the intense sound and preserve their own hearing, so to speak. Females can make a sound. Females make a sound using their wings, and you could actually trick a male into singing by imitating the female sound. And you could do that by snapping your fingers or using a light switch. Or I use the, uh, the zoom button on my camcorder. Number 12, there's billions and billions of them. Like Carl Sagan would say about stars, that these are cicadas, and there's, of course there's less cicadas than stars. But anyway, the, the point is, why are there so many cicadas? And the reason why we believe is something called predator satiation. And, and I mentioned this earlier back in the animals part, but the idea, again, is that there's so many of them because they'll fill up any of the predators, any of the raccoons, humans, pets, whatever's out there waiting to eat for them. They're not waiting, really. They're not waiting. They don't know they're going to be there. Um, they're going to fill up all these animals' bellies. And then the next day, the animals are going to like, you know, enough, enough. I had enough of these cicadas. I'm going to just lay down and take a nap. Uh, I have the itis. I'm going to fall asleep. And so the next wave of cicadas make it through, and they climb up the tree, and they get up in the tree, and they sing, and they fly around, um, all thanks to the first uh, group of cicadas that made it out of the ground and satiated the hunger of any predators that were around. So kind of nice of them, right? Take one for the team. Number 13, they damage wimpy trees. What happens is a female cicada lays her eggs in a branch. She makes these slots or grooves using her ovipositor or ovipositor. And occasionally that kills the branch. 
That seems a little counterintuitive. You wouldn't want a branch to die that your babies are in, but it happens on occasion. And if your tree is a smaller tree, like a small ornamental, like four foot tall or so, uh, if enough of the branches die, the tree itself might die. So if you're concerned at all, what you might want to do is wrap your tree in some netting. We believe that's the best way to counteract it because uh, you put tape around the, the tree trunk that's not going to stop them from flying in from another yard or another tree. So if you're concerned at all, wrap that tree. Now, if you have a bigger tree like an oak tree, maple tree, an elm, like a big, hardy, strong American tree, uh, you don't have to worry about that, obviously. Big giant trees really aren't affected by that. Yes, they'll get they'll get um, damaged branches, and uh, but they'll get past it. When the cicada when the damage occurs, it's called flagging because they look like brown flags hanging from the tree, and cicada researchers will actually use that to uh, document where cicadas have bit. So to recap, if you have a wimpy tree might want to wrap it with some netting to keep the cicadas from laying eggs in the branches, which will kill a branch or two or too many, which would compromise the life of your wimpy tree. Number 14, stragglers. So, on occasion, a periodical cicada will emerge before it's supposed to, or after it's supposed to. In the case of 17-year cicadas, they'll typically emerge 14 years early. In the case of a 13-year cicada, they'll emerge four years late. It doesn't have to be four years. It could be one year. It could be two years. But the typical is, is again, if it's a 17-year cicada, it emerges four years early, 13 years, four years late. Uh, what you're looking at now on the screen is the probability chart. So why would they do this? They might. One theory is that it's too overcrowded underground. Like, there's just... The parents were so prolific that underground is just full of them. And some of them just say, you know, i got to get out. Um, another idea or theory is that that is how periodical cicadas form new broods. They, a group of them sort of breaks off, emerges early, and forms a new brood. Again, these are the theories. I don't have definitive answers why. But it's cool, right? Number 15, prime numbers. Isn't it interesting that 17 and 13 are both prime numbers? Prime numbers being numbers that are only divisible by themselves into number one. There's a lot of theories that have to do with um, these prime numbers and, and how the cicadas evolved and uh, how they allow the cicadas to sort of uh, avoid uh, gaining a predator that specifically uh, predates them. Um, interesting. Number 16, their color helps warm them up. That's right. Cicadas are cold-blooded, so they rely on the warmth of the sun and the air around them to warm up. The warmer they are, the easier it is for them to fly and sing and do other cicada stuff. And because their skin is black, that absorbs the heat of the sun and helps them warm up more quickly. Number 17, they are not sleeping underground. So there's a popular rumor or myth. I see a lot of cartoons on the internet about this uh, saying cicadas are sleeping when they're underground. They're not sleeping underground. They're building tunnels. They're building cells, which is sort of like a special alcove that they live in, especially protects them from floodwaters. They're looking for roots. They're drinking from roots. Cicadas actually go through four different life stages underground. So they're not sleeping. Yes, during the colder months, they slow down, they lessen their activity. Um, but they're not sleeping. They're, they're not like taking a nap for 17 years and then they come out. So enough of that. Makes for funny cartoons, I guess, but they're not sleeping underground. They're not. And they're not. They're, they're, they're growing. And they're 
preparing for the one day when they come out of the ground and uh, make a racket. But they're not sleeping. Not sleeping. Not sleeping. As usual, visit and share uh, with cicadamania.com. Report your cicada sightings to magiccicada.org. And you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks for listening. And thank you once again to cicadamania.com for letting us use the audio to inform you more about the 17-year cicada. Once again, go check their website out. If I haven't said it enough, cicadamania.com. That is C-I-C-A-D-A-M-A-N-I-A.com. That's Cicada Mania. You'll find a whole bunch of awesome resources on there that explain uh, stuff about the 17- and 13-year cicadas, the species, the sounds. There'll be pictures. You can even buy a really cool shirt there if you're into it. And this is another cool thing is you can report your sighting there. So they're keeping track of where these little suckers are coming out, like all around the state and all the way down into West Virginia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, all that. So check the show links out for more information. I'd also like to thank, now this is very important. I have a few really cool supporters on my show. They are Waffender Whisker Oil, Brutal Beards, and Groomed Gorilla. And they have been awesome since the day one, since I've started my podcast. They've pretty much all been there since the very beginning supporting me and, you know, just sending me products. They've sent me different things that I've used as prizes for different competitions that I've been involved in. And I'm just trying to help them get their get their names out there. They're, they're great people. Everyone involved in all those companies are great people. But on top of that, all three companies have fantastic products and I'm not the type of guy that's going to go out there and and say hey man you guys are so great give me some free stuff and you know I'm going to promote you on my my thing I am very very particular about the scents I use and the quality of the products the prices everything and these three companies produce some of the greatest stuff I've ever tried. I've tried lots of different things, and these three companies have been fabulous. They have great products, great customer service, and the people running them are just awesome. So please check all of them out. I will have links in my show notes. Once again, check them out, and thank you. You can find out more information about me, once again, at www.thebeardcaster.com. You can find links to all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. My Patreon, donate at the bottom. And that's about all I have for you today. So thank you once again to cicadamania.com, Waffender Whisker Oil, Brutal Beards, Groomed Gorilla. But once again, that's all I have for you today. So I apologize for being a few days late on this podcast, but things are going to get a little bit sketchy here coming up, but I'm going to be within the two-week range of posting shows still so just bear with me and i thank everyone who's been tuning in once again thank you and have a great day ciao